And with that, we'll get into our final uh, presentation, and it's from uh, Rick Palm, K1CE, our ARL Aries letter editor, QST public service columnist, going to talk about his personal experience with Hurricane Adalia. Rick? I'll keep this really brief. Um, uh, thanks for having me here this year. I've, I've lived in Florida for 25 years now, and you know, through the 2004 spate of hurricanes that crisscrossed the state then and many others since then, I've seen the projected tracks of hurricanes pointing to our state countless of times. Some were projected to hit our area, but always seemed to track away without much more than some rain and minor winds. The truth be told, I had become inured to the possibility of real personal danger. Well, that perspective changed dramatically last August with Hurricane Adalia, which hit the big bend of Florida as a Category 4 hurricane, as we discussed earlier. We live in Columbia County, which was in the northeast quadrant of the storm, packing winds of 110 miles per hour. Um, is there a way to advance the uh, slide, Rob? Um, yeah, there's the uh, pa page down? Okay. Yep. Right here, the down, button. down button right there. Okay. Is there a pointer on here too? Or? Yes. There okay. is. That's the last button. Thank you. Yep. That's the track of uh, Hurricane Adalia late last August. And that is a picture of Hurricane Adalia making the landfall there near Perry, as was discussed a little bit earlier. And um, we live. Um, <laughs> we live right here, right there. Um, I never made it to uh, my Aries assignment at a town shelter. Instead, I hunkered down at home with my wife and five dogs, and we sat in our living room and watched a huge tree snap off and crush our two cars. Um, and we then realized that we were directly in harm's way, and we were gripped by and frozen with fear. Um, and I'll tell you, that is a, it's a horrible uh, feeling. Uh, during a lull in the storm, and for the first time in more than 40 years of professional and amateur association with Julio and the operators at WX4NHC at the National Hurricane Center and the venerable Hurricane WatchNet, I found myself checking into the net on battery power and filing a report on conditions on the ground. Thank you, net and station operators, for being there for us. It was a huge morale booster, to say the least. Truth be told, much of our situation was due to my own failing to follow many standard, well-accepted recommendations due to stress. So where did I go wrong? First and foremost, we failed to evacuate to the town shelter, which was a scant four miles uh, away from our home, and is, it's hardened against such storms. And that decision put us in life-threatening danger, and I had possibly also let my Aries team and the shelter residents down by not being there. In the face of uh, danger, uh, psychological stressors, and the primordial survival instinct, uh, cause a, a kind of a tunnel vision where uh, judgment and the ability to assess a situation more broadly and realistically are undermined. And denial is a powerful de defense mechanism that works against leaving home and hearth in any circumstance because no one believes that it can actually happen to them. And after years of, uh, years of recommending personal family and emergency communication plans and countless issues of QST and newsletter articles and so forth, we had virtually none of them. Um, upon checking into the Hurricane Watch Net, the net control station asked for my report on conditions on the ground and my measured meteorological data, but I regrettably had no weather instruments to provide that data. So that was, our, that was the situation. On the positive side, since then, last month at the Orlando Hamcation, I bought a Pete Brothers Company anemometer, wind vane, rain measuring device, and installed them on an antenna mast, <laughs> a set of instruments to provide what could be critical 
information in future incidents. My new weather station costs about $300. Also, on the positive side, my radio station is installed in a heavy steel 8 by 20 foot shipping container that has survived hurricane force winds and flying debris before. And also, I, I also had ample 12 to 13 volt battery power and a generator fully gassed up and ready to go. And those were the assets that enabled me to check into the hurricane watch net and provide that report for WX4 NHC operators. Uh, also, I was able to maintain communication with Columbia County Emergency Coordinator Brad Schwartz, M5CBP. Um, Columbia County, where we live, is a large, sparsely populated rural county. My colleagues in the county's Vital Areas Program were busy. Uh, E.C. Schwartz was the lead in the County Emergency Operations Center, where Florida Governor Ron DeSantis spoke with EOC staffers and held a press conference just prior to the storm's arrival. In Columbia County, five shelters had a, held a total of 87 residents. Five ARIES members were dispatched to those shelters where they maintained uh, communications with Schwartz and other EOC amateur station operators. There were always two operators on duty at the EOC to cover shift assignments and provide redundancy. The EOC generator came on when the mains failed on site, providing emergency power for the amateur station and critical EOC functions. Wind link email was set up, when cell service between the special needs shelter and the EOC became unreliable, ARIES operators provided communication between sheltered staff and the Florida Department of Health Services, assisting in several matters. At the request of the Florida Division of Emergency Management, ARIES operators were able to establish communication with neighboring Suwannee County's EOC and also at the request, ARIES operators were able to send a message to the neighboring Gilchrist, Gilchrist County Emergency Manager. SARNET, which we talked about a little bit earlier, uh, the statewide 70 centimeter repeater emergency communications network was available for communication with the state EOC from Columbia County. And two, H band, uh, two HF bands, 80 and 40 meters, were used for statewide communications. So things we really need to work on in Columbia County is to have a, uh, to try to develop more of an understanding of our EOC organization and functions. We also need to develop communication and relationships with other neighboring county EOCs and emergency coordinators. And lastly, and, mostly, and most importantly for all of us is the recruitment of additional ARIES operators. And that is a major national ARL objective for this year. So anything any, any of you can do in that regard will be a big help. And uh, that's basically it. I'll go through the rest of these slides really quickly. Um, um, let's see. Am I pushing the wrong button here? Let's see. Page down, is it? Okay. I can't seem to get this to work, though. <laughs> oh, because this is... Oh. Okay. 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 All right, so it's back. So this was uh, that day. Um, that's our, there's two, actually two cars under that, uh, that huge tree that came down. Uh, uh, our pickup truck there under the same tree. And that's my new weather station on top of my uh, ham radio shack back there. It works really great. Another shot of the damage. That's my shipping container with my ham station housed in it. That worked really well. And uh, Josh mentioned the Oxcom course. Uh, Florida is now in Oxcom state, and there's more and more courses given to uh, uh, courses given for the emergency communi auxiliary communication certificate. So that's something you really might want to think about. It's really gaining traction here in uh, this state. I uh, would recommend that if you get a chance to do it. And it's the last slide. I just couldn't resist putting this one in. This was a, a presentation I gave 25 years ago at the National Hurricane Center at the best of uh, Julio. And uh, 25 years ago, it was just hard to believe, really. Um, one quick little anecdote, it's kind of funny. Um, I was standing up there talking, and my wife was in the uh, audience there, and I was just thinking to myself, uh, boy, she must be really impressed with me standing up there and 
on a podium that says Department of Commerce on the United States of America, you know, and I looked, I looked down at her, you know, for a prideful gaze, and she was like this. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we laughed about that for years. So, anyway, um, tried to keep this short here. And uh, that is our uh, great EC in Columbia County, Brad Schwartz. Excellent guy, really uh, in inspiring, really uh, good to have him at the helm there. He's in the EOC amateur radio station there in uh, Lake City. And that's it. Thank you all for uh, serving Aries and uh, uh, the country with uh, hurricane communications. Special thanks to Julio. Uh, who I've known for 40 years, you know, going back a, a, lo a long, long way. So we've worked together on a lot of things. Thank you very much.